Hey, it's Eric G. Around the House is sponsored by Baldwin Hardware. For 75 years, Baldwin Hardware has been known for its first class quality and craftsmanship in door and cabinetry hardware. As an alumnus of the Baldwin Hardware Design Council, I can say I have seen the details and quality from design to the finished product. If you're looking for a new style and old world craftsmanship, I can tell you there is only one Baldwin Hardware. Check out what would look great in your home at baldwinhardware.com. It's Around the House. When it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there is a lot to know, but we got you covered. This is Around the House. Welcome to the Around the House show. This is where we help you get the most out of your home through information and education. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, if you want to find out more about us, head over to aroundthehouseonline.com. And if you want to ever catch the show early, a couple days early, become one of our insiders, and you can do that. Just head over here in the show notes or head over to aroundthehouseonline.com. Well, today I wanted to talk about some stuff that I found sleuthing through the interweb. And I'm always kind of looking to see what new building code changes are going to be for next year. And this one raised a bunch of eyebrows for some people. And for for some people, it, it concerns them. Some people, it doesn't. But I just wanted to let you know it's out there so you can be more informed. I'm seeing a bunch of building code changes for the uh, International Building Code that is going to require a lot of new appliances to have grid integration. So that means water heaters will have to have grid integrated controls on electric water heaters. What's that mean? That means that um, you can actually give the ability of your, basically your electric utility to control your water heater. So if there's a, uh, you know, big demand on it, that they can shut it off or control it for you. And I'm seeing that now on water heating. I'm seeing this grid integrated thermostats requires grid integrated controls on space heating and cooling systems that adjust temperature within four degrees. Solar and storage inverters require solar and energy storage systems to be equipped with smart inverters for grid integrated controls. Uh, The one that didn't get approved was the single two-family EV charging requires multifamily to comply with sister provision. So that didn't go. And energy storage readiness, they had to modify that, but they were basically requiring single and two-family energy storage readiness. So interesting stuff that we're seeing in the new building code where they're trying to really change all of the heating and cooling, water heating, you know, and solar to be able to be controlled by your utility. So that, to me, says that, uh, one, they're trying to control peak time energy, which, you know, that's what it is. And they're going to be able to do so by having that ability. Now, it's here's the thing. I don't know, and it's going to come down to your thermostat and how that communicates. Now, keep in mind, uh, for anybody that's really worried about this, if you don't have it hooked up into your into a uh, way to communicate, then it's not going to be that way. So it's just something to think about. But uh, this is one of those things that, um, you know, depending on how these hook up, uh, you it might be asking you permissions. It might not be. So please do some more research on what's going on there. And that's in the United States here. And uh, going through that, that's interesting. So uh, you're seeing a lot of changes here as well on um, energy credits, um, all of these things. Uh, You're seeing a lot of different things as far as um, efficiency in commercial buildings, uh, renewable energy type stuff. So that is the biggest changes that we're seeing coming up. Uh, their proposed changes for 2024. So uh, just something to be uh, keep your eye on. I don't think I see anything else in here that's really big. Um, uh, They are seeing um, that uh, leak testing needs to be done for duct HVAC controls. Um, There's a bunch of stuff that's kind of minor stuff in there, really, that's not. But uh, 
Uh, anytime that you do system sizing, you need to, uh, if you're changing your the alteration of that system, the new equipment has to be sized based on those alterations. So uh, little things like that, but that's really the big part of that. So uh, keep in mind that this is something new coming. Looks like to water heaters and heating and cooling. Uh, a lot of them already have that, but it's something that they're going to be forcing in building code for 2024. You know, there are a couple other minor details that I'm seeing that have popped up here in the IRC for 2024. It looks like it's going to go through. You're starting to see them actually addressing decks and putting the best practices on deck construction as far as lateral bracing and flashing and things like that that should have been in there. They're finally going to be dealing with that, and that's going to be good for anybody out there. And then there's a lot of other little things that are going on, uh, like ceiling heights in older homes, not having to uh, to uh, little grandfathering in there. So you might be able to uh, use more of those spaces, like in a basement that was unfinished, that it's just not cost effective to dig out to get to the minimum height. Uh, they're trying to do some things like sleeping lofts and uh, things like that. So we're going to see a little bit more of that kind of stuff going on here, which makes it more interesting. So uh, when I see the final and get that 2024 edition in my hand, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But it looks like uh, there's going to be some things in there. They're going to try to maybe address a little bit of affordability. But that is one of the problems with remodeling in this new code is that uh, even though they're trying to go for health, safety, and welfare, this, these new codes many times do add to the cost of construction. All right, everybody. Well, we got a big show coming up this weekend. We're going to be talking about kitchen design and the mistakes and ways to get around those things and some of my biggest tips. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one, so we're going to dive into that. And then we've got so much more. You'll see that on Thursday when we tease up the show on Thursday afternoon. But uh, we've got a great big show this weekend as well. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. Happy midweek special. We've got a big show ahead on the TV side. We even go out to Stormbreaker Brewing and uh, watch them make beer. And then we uh, do some reframing in my house. If you want to check this out, it's probably the most twisted two by four I've seen in a building. Came out of my garage. And we'll talk about that on the TV show. And we'll see you on Saturday. Thanks for tuning in to Around the House. Anywhere beyond the me Life is a love song, let's be lovers We're all over the radio Take my hand, I know where to go All over the radio with you Hey, it's Eric G from Around the House. Are you planning a decking or siding project this year? If you are, you've got to check out my friends at Millboard. Millboard is a completely different kind of composite decking and cladding that enhances outdoor spaces with enduring distinction. Hand molded from the finest oak, it realistically mimics the natural grain and color of premium hardwood. If you're looking for something that doesn't look like plastic and instead real wood, check out millboard.com. Make sure and check out that interview we did just a few weeks back. That's millboard.com.